Hi, I'm Chris Bishop and welcome to The Small Business Show and welcome to Randberg. And I was just thinking the other day, how many times in one year we come to Randberg because it's one of the great entrepreneur capitals of Johannesburg. Now we're here to meet a man called Scott Kundal, who's not only built his own business from scratch, he's also got a fine line in Kung Fu. Come with me. My name is Scott Kundal. I'm the founder and CEO of Majestic3.com. Majestic3.com is an IT company and it's a technology company that works in puzzle pieces. So we are a database communication company, we're a big data company and we're a communication company and we have the ability to, like puzzle pieces, take little bits of all the best pieces of software, amalgamate them into one and then allow companies to completely customise their own customer relationship management solutions. We are here in Talks offices at the moment. These are our biggest reseller. They are, uh, have been with us for 10 years. And where's Majestic3.com work primarily with resellers. Um, I personally am involved in Shaolin Kung Fu. I represent South Africa for Shaolin Kung Fu. I um, recently came back from China from the World Champs. And I like to include philosophy of Kung Fu and Chinese understanding of Kung Fu into my day-to-day -day operations. Scott Kundal, thank you very much for joining us on the program. We're down here in Randburg, which is a little bit of a hub in the kind of business that you're in. Yes, actually, uh, thanks, Chris. It's good to be here. Uh, Randburg has become quite the little spot. It's almost like a, another little entrepreneurial hub of South Africa. And uh, yourself, are you from an entrepreneurial family? To a certain extent. Um, my father was a screenplay writer. He wrote a lot of the old TV shows like uh, Jock of the Bushveld, the movie, um, The Villagers, Westgate. Uh, so he, he was always on his own. He was always been his own man. Um, and that is exactly what I became. I decided, you know, from an early age, I went to university in Australia and I remember when asking a whole bunch of uh, other students, what do you want to be when you finish university? And they all said, I want to get a job. I want to get a job. I want to get a job. And I was like, is there anyone here who doesn't want to get a job? So I was just, you know, um, I need to do something differently. So um, I don't think I've ever in my life had a full-time job for more than a few months. So you woke up the next morning and uh, what did, how did you start out? I mean, from the very beginning. Well, the first thing I wanted to do, I was doing a BCom and I was doing information management and marketing. And I came back to South Africa. Everyone was flying that way and I was flying that way. So I was born in South Africa. It was the start of a, a world tour. Um, and I'm still waiting to go on that world tour, actually. Um, I got involved in an internet marketing company. Uh, at that time, it was a web design company. And that was in the summer of 1996. And things were in their infancy then. I mean, a lot of people didn't, weren't quite sure how to use it. What was it like? Yeah, I don't know. It was, well, it was fascinating. I mean, it was, it was a, a, huge, a lot of opportunity, uh, a lot of uncertainty. Uh, I actually had, the, uh, it was, had, had an email address, which was scott at global.co.za. Now, if you remember the old global days, they were one of the, the early ISPs. Um, so I had this email address, um, and I was just kind of wondering what to do. Websites, there were guys charging hundreds of thousands of rands at the time for websites, and others charging two or 3,000 rand. So it was a very interesting... Um, embryonic phase of what was happening to the internet back then. Well, a number of people I've interviewed on this very program have said to me, uh, those days, it's hard to imagine that they ever happened. People used to phone up and say, the internet's broken. I'm sorry, I can't do anything. Some people used to say, uh, you'd set them up with the email, they'd say, right, who do I email now? I don't know anyone. And they'd say, well, you can email me. <laughs> And it used to happen. I mean, yeah, what, what yeah. was it like when you started out? I mean, yeah, well, we were doing web design. So we were trying to get companies just to think about the possibility of having a website. And a lot of them would say, well, why have a website? What was the point? Like, do I need one? What, really? I mean, is, is there any, is there a, necessi a necessity for it? So we were selling websites. So it was, a very, it was surprisingly difficult. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was in the early days. And you're right, email was also at its infancy back then. But these days, I mean, it's everybody who's got any form of company has got a website these days, it's yes. a given. But those days, what was the resistance to it? It was just uh, apathy. It was, uh, why? What, what, was, what was the point? I've got the yellow pages, you know, what's the internet for? Um, you know, the, the physical hard yellow pages book, that was kind of the, the thing. Um, and websites were, were interesting because they allowed people to come up with a creative freedom that kind of married both the left and right brain. And that's kind of where I positioned myself, as the bridge between technology or IT and marketing. And that's kind of where I wanted to position myself. And here I am 17 years later, doing pretty much the same thing in the same 
respect. It must be more difficult these days. I mean, with technology like it is, I mean, people can build their own and that sort of thing these days. What sort of a problem do you have there? Well, a famous uh, person once said, I can't remember exactly who it was, but there was a famous quote in the internet that says, everybody can have a website. Mm. And unfortunately, everybody does. Mm. So you have this disparity between really, really bad stuff out there, not just websites, but mm. all sorts of things, apps, etc., and the really, really good. So you have this huge disparity, but that's what really what makes the internet special. And so what do you have to do these days then to, to make it worth the while, to make it worth someone shelling out hundreds of thousands of rand? Well, interestingly enough, you know, our focus has, has now changed. I mean, Majestic3.com was created uh, to allow the same flexibility of having websites, um, but not with websites. We focus on databases. So we're about communication. So interestingly enough, although we are a technology company with a team of programmers building stuff, we consider ourselves a great communication company. So we try to get uh, companies to understand that websites and your marketing and even your social media to extent should be leveraged via getting yourself a really good big data database in place and then how you communicate from that database and how that database then integrates into everything else that you do. So how do you turn your database into a marketing machine and how do different clients and different customers and different businesses integrate and speak to each other using their databases but doing it in a very ethical opt-in way. And that has now taken things from 17 years ago right into the future and what's happening now. So how, diff how di much more difficult is it these days, bearing in mind um, there's so much noise on the internet. I mean, you can go on, there's, there's almost too much for me sometimes, you know, and I'm an information yep. Yep. person and a journalist. There's, there's stuff coming at you all the time, more and more, newer and newer. How do you survive? That's the ultimate question. And Majestic is not just a technology system. It's not just a database system. It's been designed as a philosophy. So we actually have a specific implementation process, which we call relationship data sale. Now your question was, how do you break through the clutter? Now if your 10 year old son that you were mentioning us mm. earlier is uh, doing Shaolin Kung Fu, mm. uh, if he suddenly uh, sent you an SMS, would you respond to it? Yes, I would. Absolutely, because you know the person, there's a yeah. relationship. Now the same thinking applies to everybody. Now businesses have around them what we call a first degree of separation. All the people, all the contents, that, contacts that they've managed to connect with over the years. Mm. Now take those contacts and start connecting with them in an authentic, genuine way. Mm. Not in a spammy sell, sell, sell way. Relationships first. Your response rates go through the roof. They mm. are much, much higher. In fact, they're usually between 1,200% mm. and 2,000% higher by the way in which you communicate. So the answer to your question is, how do you break through the clutter? You do it by building authentic relationships with communication with people that know and trust you, not spamming them and sending them rubbish adverts. Okay, well, how do you do that every day? Because you get thousands of things. I get thousands of, um, of emails and website and links as, a, as an editor, people trying to sell me things. But often I find if I go through those things, I find that um, I find the real stuff I'm looking for without the actual mm -hmm. hard sell in my face. How do you, how do you um, get people like me, perhaps who are a bit jaded by yep. the whole thing? How, how do you do that? The first thing is we look at, uh, again, we talked about the, the martial arts side of it, and, um, but uh, it's, there, there, there's a kind of, we look at it as a bit of an ancient philosophy. So mm -hmm. we, we say to, to answer that question, instead of become a salesman, first become a teacher. So if you become a teacher first, your relationships will grow naturally. You'll position yourself as an expert. From your expertise, from what you give, then you'll be able to analyze that information that comes back to you from those relationships, and then you'll become a salesman. So the idea, the idea is stop becoming a salesman and start becoming a teacher. Now, if you're receiving interesting insights, interesting information, value-added content, then you're much more likely to open and read it if it comes from a trusted source. So the idea is we've got to stop selling and start teaching. And when you do that and realize that you can become a teacher, customers give you information, they give you their data because there's that trust element. Then when you get that information back, like a doctor, a doctor diagnoses and then writes a prescription specifically with what you need. You will become that expert as well. And then the sales will become a natural part of your day-to-day -day business life. So it's a different philosophy. It's not just about technology. Now, Sherilyn Kung Fu, uh, yes. we've mentioned it already. And as I say, my 10-year-old son <laughs> is like yourself. Brilliant. He's, uh, he's part of it. And um, essentially, you're saying that this is part of your philosophy. But just give a bit of the background. You actually um, represented South Africa in China yes. in the World Championships. Yep. Um, 
How does uh, your, your Shaolin Kung Fu fit in with your, your attitude to life and business? It's, it's, it's a wonderful story and I, I love telling it and I'll, I'll give you the short version. But essentially it's made several differences in my life. Um, one of the first things it's taught me is that, is that the impossible is possible. And I know that sounds very esoteric and nonsensical, but when it applies to Kung Fu, Kung Fu is about a certain type of energy, which they call Fa Jing power, which is completely the opposite to what you'd expect. And what I mean by opposite, it's got this reputation of you know, Kung Fu and fighting, it's got this reputation of being hard, strong, kind of almost masculine. Actually, to generate explosive power, which they call Fa Jing power, you need to be soft, you need to be relaxed. How did you get that into it? That changes your thinking. How did you get into it? Uh, I, met, I met the right teacher. I met a, a 32nd generation Shaolin monk by the name of Liu Shuameng, who arrived in South Africa, couldn't, couldn't speak of a word of English. He arrived in this country, and when I found there's a saying, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. <laughs> and I met the teacher and I said, this is it. This is it. So yeah. um, you, you think that, um, you know, what particular, you sound like quite a, an optimistic and a sort of energetic person to me, I mean, with your Kung Fu, what have you, but um, any bad days for you? I mean, you were sort of person who's Many. been Many. I down. actually went through a story, uh, a, a really bad patch uh, in the, uh, probably about 2004, around that area, and I, I mean, effectively lost everything. I mean, I went through, I got, I got uh, taken for a ride by a few uh, unscrupulous business people. Mm. Um, I went through a very rough time, and when I say very rough, it was, it was, it was, it was, yeah, quite a dark period. Um, so yes, I did. Um, and that was in the very early days of Majestic. It was just getting started. Like trying to sell websites to, mm. to people in the old days, we're trying to convince people about the necessity of having a database and communicating with that database mm. and doing that in an authentic, genuine way. It wasn't easy. Um, so it was a very difficult period of time. Uh, we had no money. I drove a piece of rubbish car. I told my son, it was, I called it daddy's rubbish car, um, which broke down all the time. And I remember one day it broke down on the highway for about the third time in the week. And I was just sitting there going, you know, it, it was, so the answer to your question is absolutely. It you ever thought about giving it up and just walking away? Often, doing something? No, in the, old, in the old days, absolutely. I mean, I did, but it was, there was something about the, the product, the concept that I know that needed to take shape. And although the concept has evolved since then, I've always believed that the business that you ultimately make money in is often the business, not the business that you started in. Your business will change and adapt. So get going, make it happen, but don't be scared to adapt. Like Bruce Lee said, be like water flow, go with the flows. And that's exactly what we did. What would you rather be? Um, the next Bruce Lee world champion or would you rather be the entrepreneur of the year in Africa? Goodness, Chris, how can you ask me that? Ah, oh my gosh, you've got a it. fantastic question. Well done. You've <laughs> really put me on the spot. Sure. Um, obviously, I want to be both. Um, you know, uh, I'm not quite world champion yet, although I did win medals in, in overseas for South Africa. Um, so I do want to get that. I believe you can do both and I know I will do both. Um, but right now my focus is on business. I want the concept of Majestic and Majestic3.com to become a household word. I believe we, we're innovative and we're changing the way people think about business and that's what I want to do. Uh, Kung Fu is very, very special for me. But right now, you put me on the spot, I'd have to say I need to focus on business. Well, we wish you the very best of luck. Uh, Scott Kundal and Majestic, thank you very much for sharing your insights on Kung Fu and business. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for for this edition of the Small Business Show. From me, Chris Bishop in Randburg, it's goodbye.